Hello and welcome to Audiobook Reviews. In this video I'll be discussing The Ill Earth War by Stephen R. Donaldson, the second book in the first chronicles of Thomas Covenant the Unbeliever. Now, in my video on Lord Falsbane, I praised the prose and writing and the general style of Donaldson, but also had quite a few issues with pieces of the title character and gave my take on what I thought would have been a really good alternate story option for the first book. The problem was that my take really worked more so for a standalone book, which of course Lord Falsbane was not, and the Ill Earth War right away proved that Donaldson had a very good reason for writing the first book the way that he did. Immediately I found myself drawn into Thomas Covenant's story once again. His real world experiences are written so well and with so much internal and external struggle in such short passages of the overall book. Like the first book, Covenant Struggle set the scene for what was going to come in the land. When arriving in the land, during another traumatic time in Covenant's life in our world, Covenant maintains his stance that the land and everything around him is not real, but at the same time is forced to deal with his past actions. Forty years have passed in the land, in what was mere months for Covenant, yet his actions have certainly not been forgotten. He's forced to relive and face friendships he made, he, people he let down, and his heinous rape of Lena. While still struggling with believing that this could all be real, he finds himself interacting emotionally much more than he did before, which really adds so much more depth to the character. Donaldson makes narrative choices early on that made me fully stick with my theory that it is really in Covenant's head, and then he promptly throws them all into question when we get a point of view from another character for the first time in High Old Troy. Troy is also from the quote-unquote real world, and in many ways acts as the exact opposite of Covenant. He is tasked with the nigh impossible, winning the war against Lord Fowl, who is using the Ill-Earth Stone to turn others to his side in his quest to destroy the land. This was a surprising development, but I feel like it was something that the story really needed. Troy is not without his flaws, but he gives you a completely different point of view, and allows for strong emotional moments during the war against Fowl that you would simply not be able to get from Covenant. The story structure as well, while a bit unorthodox, I think worked really, really well here. We follow a main story, and while other important side plots are happening, we have those related to characters via the people who were there, instead of jumping over to them and actually seeing them firsthand. The main story threads all are going in very different directions, but are all tied together in a very satisfying, if somewhat abrupt, end. Donaldson's prose remains exceptional. His descriptions of the land and contrast with our world makes you feel both and makes them feel very real. He digs deep into the psyche of a leper, an outcast, so afraid to believe in a way out because he knows if he gives in, he won't be able to go on living in reality. He digs into the other characters as well, showing the people in the land not being quite so perfect as they seem at some times, and in Troy and his own struggles as somebody who is blind and was given sight when he came to the land. The Ill Earth War, while actually spending less time overall with Covenant, reinforces what the first book laid down and goes much deeper as well, making it clear through his interactions, thoughts, and speech why Covenant is the way that he is. While he'll never be a likable character, nor is he in any way intended to be, he is a character that you get to know deeply enough that, to me, even though I've obviously never been in a situation anything like his for any of his parts of the story, I feel like I can still identify with him, with the despair, the anger, and the cynicism that are in his life, because those are feelings everybody has from time to time, and Covenant really just takes them to an extreme. The point of view of Heil Troy lends for a different look at Covenant than anyone else shows in the land. Troy is unwilling to look past Covenant's massive flaws and can't understand why those in the land do. The back and forth views really add a lot to both of these characters and showing the way they look at each other and the world around them. To me, Ill Earth not only was a great book, but it avoided the second book slump that can often happen in trilogies. Instead, it picked up the pace quite a lot while not sacrificing the writing style of the first book. I found myself regretting having waited so long to continue this series, to be honest, and I would have I would have almost nothing to complain about. And yet, and yet, 
Donaldson seems to have to have something to damage the story in this book as well. Now, this is where I'm going to get into mild spoiler territory. The first part is revealed very early on and is pretty evident anyway, I think, concerning the identity of a character, and then kind of the more the main part is the relationship of that character in regards to Covenant. As always, if you do want to skip the spoiler section, which will be pretty brief, check the description for the timestamp where you can skip to. With that, here we go. So one big issue I had with Lord Felsbane was that Covenant's rape of Lena seemed to just mostly be ignored for the vast majority of the book, barring the immediate aftermath. In Ill-Earth, this is actually an integral part of the plot, which really shows why Donaldson wrote the first book the way that he did to me. We find out that Lena had a child, and that her child, Elena, has become the High Lord. This set up for so much potential tension and conflict between Elena and Covenant, and it would have been better going virtually any other way than it did. Simply put, Elena and Covenant have a ridiculously creepy relationship, considering they are, although in a weird way, father and daughter. Elena has, you know, been, she's around 40, it was 40 years ago when all this happened, and Covenant had no time has passed, but still, he knows extremely early on that it is his daughter, and everything about it is just plain wrong. Covenant's thoughts toward her are wildly inappropriate, and there's even a scene where she offers herself to him that was just absolutely painful to read. This whole subplot is just completely unnecessary, and not only does it add nothing at all, it greatly harms the book in my opinion. For something that was almost a perfect book, this is really the sole blemish. So to summarize the spoiler section without spoilers, there is one character relationship that was just so, so not needed and really damaged the book overall by having it included, in my opinion. The, the book still was fantastic and it is a great entry, but I really, really question why Donaldson felt the need to write that specific relationship the way that he did. Once again, I feel like any other way he could have gone would have been so much better. Although, all things considered, this is still a great book, and a book I enjoyed much more than the first entry. While Lord Falsbane was good, I had a lot of issues with it, and for the most part, these issues were not only addressed in one way or another, but most of them were even expanded on quite a lot in the Ill-Earth War. I look forward to the conclusion of this first trilogy, in The Power That Preserves, which is the third and final book of the first Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, and I'm really hoping that Donaldson keeps up with the good parts of book two and sticks the landing with book three. That said, that's my review of The Ill-Earth War. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, and if you'd like to see more content like this, then feel free to subscribe.